Rico, right? No, 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 no. I want to no, 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 say something. I want to say, hold on, hold on. I want to say something. Hey, before you leave, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Come here, come here, come here. I wouldn't say that. Come here, come here. I know better than that. Hey, watch this, watch this, brother, brother. Because you just said you just ordered an apocryphal, right? Watch this. I want to show you something out of the apocryphal. Give me a Sarah, the fifth chapter, start at verse seven. Because y'all know y'all Israel, right? You know you're an Israelite. You know you got to keep God's commandments, correct? Okay, watch this. I want to show y'all something. Give me that. Uh, start at, uh, chapter 5 and start at verse, yeah, start at verse 7. Sirach, chapter 5 and verse 7. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord and put not off from the day to day. What is that saying? So it's telling you, yeah, make no tarry, meaning okay. do not wait. Nice. Read, read that verse again. Make no tarry. And this even goes for you, sister. Because what we teach it is to keep God's commandments. And to an Israelite, just like this brother's an Israelite, this sister, and all these so-called blacks and Hispanics that you see, you we are God's chosen people. Right. So God is telling you, do not tarry to come and serve him. Read on. And put not off from day to day. Don't put off day to day. Do not say, oh, okay, I'm going to get myself right, you know what I'm saying? And then next week I'm going to come to the school. Then next week come, and you're like, yeah, I'm still working on it. And next and next week, because if, if I'm not mistaken, this ain't your first time coming up here. No, dude, I, I, try I know this is not I, your first time. Because I, I, I know you look familiar. No. So what I'm saying, hold on, hold on. What I'm saying is, don't put it off. I, no, I it's a reason why you keep running into us. Do not put it off. Right. Read on. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. Because the Bible says, suddenly the wrath of God will what? Shall come forth. Will come forth. And while you think you're in your security, you drive, and the next thing you know, an 18 will come out of nowhere. Boom! Right. And now your lights is out. That's why God said, do not make, do not wait. Do not wait to come serve me. Come on. And in thy security. In your security when you think you're safe. Because many of our people, we walk around. Because I'm telling you, if God was standing right there and with a freaking axe, like, look, either keep the commandments, I'm going to chop your head off. What are you going to do? You're going to keep the commandments. You're going to do exactly what he tell you to do, right? But, because, matter of fact, hold that. Give me that in Proverbs. Well, a sentence. Uh, uh, or it's Ecclesiastes 8. Give me that. Give me that. Because many of our people think that they have time. They think they have they security. You, had, you have no security with God. God tells you to keep his commandments. And when it's your time, and if you decide to ki continue to break his commandments, he might decide to turn your lights out. But watch this. Read that. I think it's uh, uh, 8 11. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily like for example an evil work today's the lord's sabbath day we're not supposed to be buying selling or cooking or working on this day that's an evil work women wearing pants women wearing men's attire women dr women dressed in unmodestly that's an evil work but the bible says because sentence isn't executed speedily meaning you don't get judged right then read therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil now it's fully set into you to do evil so now you sit back thinking i got time i'm good i'm all right god ain't there I, nothing's happened to me yet i got time but what we're here to tell you you do not got time yeah you cannot think like that even you sis this might be your first time ever hearing that you're an israelite this might be the first time you ever heard this, but guess what? We're trying to tell you something that's going to save and change your life, that you are God's chosen people. You are the greatest thing that ever walked this earth, and we have to start living like it. Well, God is going to judge us. God, it's a reason why we feel the slums and in the ghettos. It's a reason why police brutality is a thing with blacks and Hispanics. It's because we're breaking God's commandments. It's because we we, we run around, We all we worried about is freaking uh, Instagram models and want to be thoughts and this and that. Where the doctors at? Where the lawyers at? Where are the people that want to come back to God's laws, live righteously and benefit their nation? It's time for us to come back. Go back, uh, uh, Sirach. Sirach chapter 5, read verse 7 again. So before you leave here, have this understanding. Don't wait. Don't wait. As soon as you leave here, you should have your mind, okay, dang. I need to figure out what God requires of me. Watch this. Read that. The book of Sirach chapter 5 and verse 7. Yo. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord 
and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. God says in your security, when you think you got time, you will be destroyed. That's what the Bible says. So don't don't make don't make haste, brother. Do not wait. I know you just not hearing this sister, but we telling you to, that you are an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. And that do you believe in the Bible? You believe in God? So do you know that there's certain things God requires of you? Do you know there's certain things that God wants you to do? Because I, I, I was just like y'all on the other side, listening to this like, dang, that's in the Bible. I grew up in the Christian church. I'm, my, my father's a pastor. My whole family is pastors. And they didn't know nothing about the Bible. It wasn't until I seen men of God that actually sit down and said, look, this is what the Bible says. This is what God requires of you. Watch this. Give me that Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Watch this. Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter. So don't wait. Do And, the, and the, the tearing that you're doing is you're tearing from God's law. You're waiting to keep God's laws. You're waiting. Like we have a school. And I'm pretty sure y'all know that. We have a school where you can come and learn your history, learn who you are according to the Bible, learn how to keep God's commandments. It's on the back of the flight. We were there every Sabbath, every Saturday. That's right. Every Saturday, you could come, learn. God requires you to wear a dress, you put on a dress, you come to the school. God requires you to put fringes on your clothes. Guess what you do? You start, you start going, okay, I can't buy today, but tomorrow I can. So first thing in the morning, I'm about to find the nearest. Where can I buy fringes at? Where can I go get them? We got a fringe clinic at the school where, we, where you, can, you, can, you can get up. We will put the fringes on there for you. But you got to make the step to keep God's commandments. You got to be the one that makes the step to keep God's commandments. Watch this, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel... What doth the Lord thy God require of thee? The Bible is very possessive. He says, Israel, which is you so-called blacks and Hispanics. He says, Israel, what does the Lord God require of you? Bring now let me out. ask you something, sis. You, uh, uh, have you ever been in a Christian church? You go to church on Sundays? Not no more? You used to though, right? Does, uh, what would you think God requires of you? Make sure y'all check that, make sure. I, I wanna see y'all at the school. What do you think God requires of you? You don't know? What does Christianity say God requires of you? You don't know? Christianity teaches you as long as you believe in Jesus. That's the only requirement, God. All you got to do is believe in Jesus and, and, and everything will be added unto you. You will be saved when he returns. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But... Let's get what the Bible requires of because that's a good answer. That's a that that is a smart answer because many of our people do not know what God actually requires of them. We've been told uh, a fabrication of what God requires of us or what we think, but no one has actually actually went into the Bible and said this is what God requires of us. Watch this. We're gonna get it today. You're gonna learn today. Deuteronomy chapter ten and verse twelve. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. God requires you to fear him. Fear God. Read. To walk in all his ways. And to walk in all his ways. How do you think you're supposed to walk in God's ways? Fear him, yes. But what are God's ways? You don't know? This Bible is God's ways. We don't. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So you're supposed to walk in God's ways. You're supposed to fear him and serve him with all thy heart and all thy soul. You want to know how you do that? By keeping God's commandments. That was, those are God's ways. Give me that in, uh, uh, I think it's Joshua. It says walk, uh, walk in his ways. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, this is how I, this is walking in God's ways. It's keep doing, doing what God says to do. Like, for example, you got any children? You have a mother, right? Okay, your mother tells you, clean up my room. Clean up your room, right? And when I come home, your room better be clean, right? If you don't do what she tells you to do, what happens? I'm saying when you were a child, growing up, you get in trouble, right? Because the way she told you to do something, you were supposed to do it, right? And if you didn't, you got punished. That's the same thing we read in the Bible. God gave us commandments. God told us what to do and what not to do. And when we didn't do what God told us to do, we got punished. 
That's what you read in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. You got what I want? Uh, yes, sir. Read that. Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. The book of the law is the Bible. It's not supposed to depart from our mouth. That's how you walk in the ways of God. That's what God requires of you, for you to keep his commandments. But we haven't been taught that in the Christian church. So it's a good thing that you ain't in the Christian church. Because all they're doing is teaching you lies. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how our men repented at heart, the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.